Good afternoon. My name is Mario Inex. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to present results obtained for the performance analysis of energy conversion materials with focus on the open circuit voltage. In particular, I will introduce a simple state space model description which enables us to investigate the open circuit voltage in organic solar cell devices by using a thermodynamic approach. Organic solar cells are promoted as next generation commercial solar cells. There are already a few commercial products on the market like the flexible thin foam panel Helia Soil from Helia Tech. The success of those materials depends inherently on strategies to increase the cell efficiency. While material design is one successful strategy to improve photovoltaic energy conversion setups, another is to focus on the device physics by developing approaches that take into account the underlying microscopical principles of the energy conversion. That means structural and energetic system parameters. The discussion of fundamental limits to photovoltaic efficiencies the enhancement of power conversion efficiencies and efficiency forecasts has been guided to research activities in the field of renewable energy conversion over decades. The key parameter to measure the performance of energy conversion materials is given by the efficiency. In particular, the power conversion efficiency at the maximum power point is defined as the ratio of the power output from the solar cell to the input power from the sun. From the current voltage curve, we can estimate the power output graphically as indicated in that figure. The efficiency is inherently related to further key quantities like the short circuit current, the open circuit voltage, and the flow factor. This relation enables us to understand limiting factors based on underlying models for the energy conversion process. In particular, to use thermodynamic approaches to calculate efficiency limits. First of all, a simple interpretation of a solar energy converter as heat engine operating between sun temperature and ambient temperature will give us the so-called Carnot efficiency as an upper limit. On the other hand, the detailed balance consideration of absorption and the emission of photons based on black body radiation and band gap energy will give us the well known shock equalizer limit of energy conversion materials. The figure here sh shows the maximum efficiency as function of the band gap. As mentioned at the beginning, I will focus here on organic semiconductor materials. Of particular interest are polymer-based heterojunctions consisting of a plant of electron donor and electron acceptor material. Donor acceptor composites with an interpenetrating structure are seen as so-called champion materials. In these materials, the generation of free charge carriers, which can be harvested at the electrodes, is limited by the complex interplay between charge generation, diffusion, and recombination processes. In bulk heterojunction organic solar cells, the generation of free charge carriers requires that photo induced excitons on the donor material must diffuse and dissociate at the donor acceptor interface before their recombination takes place. This excitone dissociation at the donor acceptor interface starts with the formation of a charge transfer state. This charge transfer state can either recombine known radiatively or undergo charge separation leading to mobile electron and hole carrier. The energy level picture shown here helps to understand the underlying microscopic processes and provides a foundation for modeling the energy conversion process. In that picture, the donor and acceptor molecule are described as a two-level system having a HOMO and a NUMO level. 
The electron transfer at the interface takes place between the LUMO level and the donor at the donor and the LUMO level of the acceptor. Based on the energy level picture, we can develop a minimal state model that includes essential physical features of organic heterojunction solar cells. That model contains electrodes at which charges can be harvested, light-induced electron excitation and relaxation between donor energy level, radiationless excitation and recombination, charge transfer at the donor acceptor interface, as well as the possibility of gaminate recombination at that interface. Important parameters are the donor band gap energy as well as the donor acceptor gap energy. Because organic semiconductors are disordered excitonic materials, charge transport takes place based on a hopping transport mechanism. The figure here shows the four accessible system states reflecting the charge transport in an energy landscape. The system dynamics is modeled by a master equation accounting for the time evolution of population probabilities. The population probabilities fulfilling normalization at all times. In that stochastic approach, the processes underlying the device operation are described as transition between microscopic system states. The transition rates contains physical parameters like temperature, or energy levels and are the link to the thermodynamics. Instead of solving the underlying master equation directly, a quite illuminating concept is given by a network representation of the underlying rate processes that allow one to decompose the stationary dynamics as cycles. In this framework, a device, as shown in the figure, is described by a graph representing states and transitions between them. States are the nodes of the graph. The links between the nodes represents the transition between states. The transition rates obey the that balance condition. In addition, we can formulate currents, such as the charge transfer current across the donor acceptor interface or the loss current associated with the non-radiative recombination at the donor acceptor interface. Under steady state operation, the open circuit voltage is defined as the point in the current voltage diagram at which the current vanishes. Now, our aim is to calculate the open circuit voltage analytically. Instead of solving the zero current condition explicitly, we use a powerful cycle analysis scheme. To explain that method, let us exemplarily consider a simple graph representing an idle photovoltaic cell. The system here is driven away from equilibrium by the processes that are deposited at the red and blue segments. At the red segment, the states S and S plus 1 are ground and excited states of a donor molecule. Transition between them are driven by the sun temperature Ds. At the blue segment, the transitions between 0 and 1 and between 0 and n represents changes in the number of electrons due to its coupling to the left and right electrodes, respectively. No equilibrium is imposed by the temperature difference between ambient and sun temperature and by the voltage difference between the electrodes. Now, how much can we learn about bulk heterojunction solar cells from cycle analysis? To answer that question, we consider three situations. The first situation shows an idle bulk heterojunction solar cell without losses. The fundamental cycle C1 is a closed path in the state space starting and ending in state zero. For that cycle, we can define the ratio between products of forward and backward rates, which lead to an exponential expression where the exponent defines the so-called cycle affinity. 
Setting the cycle affinity to zero corresponds to the situation that the steady state current through the system vanishes. That defines a stopping condition, where the driving associated with the voltage and with the temperature difference balance each other. Differently speaking, this condition gives an analytical expression for the open circuit voltage. For the idle case, we find that the open circuit voltage is given by the product between the donor gap energy times the Carnot efficiency minus the exciton binding energy. When looking at the second and third situation, a known radiative loss process is taken into account. In comparison to the idle case, losses are intersecting pathways. Differently speaking, in terms of a cycle analysis in the state space, intersecting pathways corresponds to carrier recombination in energy conversion materials. Repeating the analysis for situation one and setting the cycle affinity zero finally results in an analytical expression for the open circuit voltage, shown here. A new logarithmic term on the right-hand side appears that corresponds to recombination losses in the material. Now, the following question arises. Is it possible to give a simple thermodynamic interpretation of the results for the open circuit voltage obtained from the cycle analysis? To answer that question, let us summarize the following observations. Solar energy converter or thermoelectric energy converters are inherently known equilibrium systems driven by external forces. However, the open circuit voltage point in the current voltage diagram defines a special point at which the current vanishes and the power output is zero. Consequently, the open circuit voltage should be a special thermodynamic equilibrium point. For simplicity, we consider a simplified model for the photovoltaic cell operation, having radiative pumping, which is represented by the sun temperature, and an opposing voltage bias, so that the photo current works against this bias. Again, the energetics is specified by the divert balance ratio between transition rates. Now, the focus is in what follows on the thermodynamic properties of the open circuit configuration at which the current becomes zero. After some algebra, the corresponding population probabilities P0, P1, P2, and P3 for the associated states can be obtained together with an analytical expression for the open circuit voltage, which we have derived previously based on the cycle analysis method. We find that those population probabilities are Gibbs-like distributions, which reveal that the open circuit voltage point is a restricted thermal equilibrium point. That is T is the partition function of the restricted thermal equilibrium point. By setting the external driving forces zero, those probabilities are the Grand canonical population probabilities well known from equilibrium statistical mechanics. As we can see, the restricted thermal equilibrium population probability is parameterized by the open circuit voltage, which enters as a new parameter compared to the true thermal equilibrium configuration. Based on this result, it is possible to calculate now thermodynamic properties of the underlying system using traditional methods. For example, we are able to calculate the Gibson entropy for both the constraint and the true thermal equilibrium. The figure below shows both the constraint equilibrium entropy and the true equilibrium entropy as function of temperature. In the low temperature limit, the entropy expression fall together and approach LN2. In addition, entropy of the open circuit configuration is always larger than the entropy of the true equilibrium configuration. Now I come to the conclusions. In this talk, we could show that the open circuit voltage is a restricted thermal equilibrium point. Moreover, a cycle analysis could be used to calculate the open circuit voltage in which the charge transport is dominated by thermal hopping. Finally, the analytical results for the open circuit voltage can be used to estimate U star, the voltage related to the maximum power point. Thank you very much for listening.